I'm Thomas Rickard, and I'm here with Ethan Hawke, who most recently starred in The Newton Boys, Gattaca, Great Expectations. Welcome to Toronto, Ethan. Thank you so much. And congratulations on Snow Falling on Cedars. Thank you so much. I, I saw it last night, and it's a, a wonderful, lyrical, near poetic film. Um, and I was wondering, is it this, uh, is it this poetry of the film and of your character that, that uh, attracted you to Ishmael, or what is it that made you want to jump on board for Ishmael? Well, uh, it's, I mean, you're right, it certainly is a very lyrical film, and, and what drew me to the piece was the piece as a whole, you know, for some reason, I, I, I related to Ishmael and I wanted to play that part, but th there seemed to, for me, something at the core of the whole story. So there's something about it uh, is very mysterious and uh, it feels very rich and it's about a lot of things simultaneously and I thought that it could be a, a great film. I think you're right. Uh, something else I, I noticed in the character and, I, and, and I'm wondering how you achieved it was while we're talking about character driven, we're also talking about uh, a character who says so much with, with looks. You know, yes, there are words there. But there's a lot of um, how you're feeling that is just conveyed in, in the face. And, and I, I, I'm wondering what kind of homework you do for this or how, where it comes from. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the challenge of this piece was that you're, you're trying to tell a story that takes place like over 10 years of time. You know, it takes place before and after World War II. And it's so, uh, and so what Scott realizes so much of what the story was is the nonverbal emotional buildup of what's happening. Uh, and how to try to get at that. And that was just the challenge and the fun of the piece. Yeah. And everybody's doing it. It's not just me. It's all the actors in it are... I mean... Well, except you know, Max von Sydow has an incredible speech in the middle of the piece where it's actually very verbal. But uh, I, that was the fun of it for me. That was what was... You know, the, the landscape mm -hmm. of the country, it's so quiet and reserved, and everybody is. And so that's the movie kind of rests on on that yeah I, I also did want to ask about that not not just the landscape but the um, you're in water you're running there's a lot of snow there's uh, uh, what appears to be a it's a beautiful environment to watch but when I thought about working it I thought whoa <laughs> cold and wet uh, yeah lots of challenges there well you know that's just making movies are you, you in know? the water um, you know uh, yeah oh absolutely but I mean that's you know, I've done, for some reason, I, I've ended up doing a lot of, I did a movie when I was younger, I did a movie called White Fang out in Alaska, mm -hmm. and I did a movie a while back in the Canadian Rockies called uh, Alive, you know, I've done my share of all these snow movies and being cold and shoved and, so, you know, you just kind of deal with it. <laughs> Uh, so um, you mentioned Scott Hicks and and and, and Max and uh, uh, what was it like having um, like Sam Shepard for your father? I think this would be great. <laughs> yeah, I wish he was my father. <laughs> um, no, uh, I've done. I've known Sam for a few years. I did a play of his. I did Buried Child at the Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago, and I did uh, one act of his at the Public in New York. So I'd worked with him a couple times before mm -hmm. and really enjoyed it. And and so it was great to, you know, do those few scenes with him. And I thought he does a great job in the movie. He's such a great presence. I agree. And, and, and Max. Yeah. They're both such, uh, such great faces and dynamic people. Uh, something, uh, the backdrop to, to what's going on here is, uh, in part, uh, Second World War, the internment of Japanese, um, uh, racism of sort of a, a majority population towards a minority. How, how comfortable was this? you dealing with with this subject as well as other cast members you know I mean whenever you're dealing with racial issues I mean it's always I mean it's such a drag but they just exist you know they exist in the, in the movie uh, it's such a blight on American history you know it really takes the air out of the whole kind of noble American who was saving you know, uh, fighting the Germans and doing all this for freedom of the world when we were locking up some of our own people, mm -hmm. you know. But I, th I love that the story gets told, and what always makes it interesting is the real people's lives. And there were real, a lot of actors in the film, a lot of the Japanese people in the movie had uh, spent time in internment camps during World War II, and so Scott was really using them 
for uh, their advice on how these scenes were happening, how they played out. Yeah, it, it's, it's a part of, uh, uh, I guess, a history that's not uh, well known. I mean, many yeah. people can make it, it to, I made it to 17 years of age before I knew about this. I went yeah. through the public school system. Yeah, I know. And it's not even well documented. The history on it isn't very well recorded, mm -hmm. in, 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 you, you know? It's buried. Yeah, it's <laughs> buried. It's hidden away. There's not that many photographs. There's not, you know, it's interesting. Now, I, I want to know what do you think is the uh, sort of the, 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 the genesis behind uh, Snow Falling in Cedars? Or uh, what do you want audiences to, uh, to, to, uh, to receive or uh, be, in, yes? Well, the same thing you want from any kind of piece of art. You know, you want them to take whatever they want to, whatever they bring to it themselves, you know. You hope that they find something in it that is personal to them and interesting to them in some way. I mean, that, that's all you can really do, you know, as I can't really explain why I wanted to do the movie, but something about that book moved me, you know, mm -hmm. and I liked it and it reminds me of things that I, I like what it gets me thinking about and I hope that it does the same thing for an audience. I, I, I think it does. Um, so I want to ask, uh, where are you going from here in terms of what's your, your next project? Or I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing next. I, um, it looks like I might be doing um, uh, The Lord of the Rings. They're making a movie version of The Lord of the Rings. That'd you know? be great. Yeah, and I'll probably be involved in that. So that'll be exciting. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Ethan. All right, thank you.